If you haven't used SlideShare before, I recommend it for uploading your slides and then being able to share them with anybody and also to follow people that you have enjoyed their work as scholars and you want to be able to stay up to date with their current slides. SlideShare is more than slides. It includes sometimes videos and sometimes audio recordings as well. They are owned by LinkedIn. Um, you can use your Facebook or your LinkedIn to log in. In this case, I'm going to use uh, actually LinkedIn because you might feel more comfortable using your LinkedIn since even though most people have Facebook, LinkedIn is growing and it is your professional network. Um, once you use LinkedIn, you can then upload from Dropbox if you want to. So there's a way it connects to your Dropbox. Here's my Dropbox and, and the different folders. You'll have to accept it and link it if you haven't done so before, but uh, it's not hard to do. And then you also are able to upload other files as well. So here's an, ex an example of why people use it. So sometimes they may have a virtual resume, they may upload their teaching slides, they can uh, upload case studies, you name it. I mean, it's a place with definitely beautiful slides. So this is an example of Steve Jobs slide. Let's open a couple more examples. Let's look at the visual resume. Good. And a case study. Great, so that's an example, right? So th there are beautiful slides here. It'll, depending on what you're using, like one of the things that I was thinking yesterday uh, was what if I wanted to share um, on slides that I created, let's say, on Prezi. Well, it won't look as nice if well, if I created slides on PowerPoint, it'll look better. If I created slides on Google Presentation, or if I create them on LinkedIn, on, um, on any other system, Slideshark or Prezi, you may want to consider printing them out as PDFs first. So that's what I did with Prezi. I went ahead and printed them out as a PDF. See if I can find them here. Let's actually upload this uh, World Cafe Guide. I think it's a pretty helpful guide, so we're gonna upload it. Um, this is not a presentation, but yeah, you can upload again other documents, they don't have to be presentations. Okay, and then once you upload it, here's the document, you have to try to add a description, tags, add posting. Okay, and the virality score increases with things that you fill out. See if we can find a description online. Um, let's just copy one from this web page. And then you choose category, in this case how to, and then it's public. I cannot set it to private because I don't have a pro account. And yet if you see here, you can upload files up to 100 megabytes. If you want a larger file, you can go pro. But to be honest, most presentations are less than 100 megabytes. So even if you had a video, because I'll show you the ones I uploaded a video to before, that's also not a problem. So let's save and continue. And now it has the chair icons so you can see uh, you can share it or embed it as well and now if I went to my profile page I can see the different so I have 68 slides right now here's that document I just uploaded in this case a PDF 
And then this is the last presentation I uploaded five days ago. It has 13 views. And the more popular it's color, the more views they tend to get. So in my case, I mean, I'm pretty young. I don't get that many views. Um, but I do have an opportunity to share some of my resources, my Twitter account. And I can follow people, which is one of my favorite things about it. So let's, um, let's go to people I follow. This is a work from Una Daily. So this is an open education scholar that I follow. And so here I can see some of her slides. And I was actually in this presentation and saw this slide live. But you know, if I wanted to revisit it, I could see it here, which I think is great. Um, in addition to that, there's a lot of them. So in this case, she already has 75 views on this one. That's great. And she, again, she has all her description here, her LinkedIn profile, her Twitter profile. And if you went to your analytics, you need to have a pro account for this. They do send you a, a summary, though, of some of your statistics. So in this case, I have, I'm going to delete this because it's not mine. So let's, uh, let's delete it. It notifies you when people have a load of things that maybe, I mean, that you, of people you follow basically. So these are some of, you know, this one's been three months there, it has 300 views, six people have downloaded it, so it's been helpful for others. You can decide to share it as a Creative Commons file as well if you want to, or you can just symbolize that within your slides as well. Um, so here you can see some of these statistics, but they actually send you, see if I can find it quickly for you. Actually, send you uh, statistics every week that tell you how your slides are doing. So I have 15,000 views, 124 downloads, and just in a week I had six more downloads, which to me it's pretty nice uh, to see that people are downloading my work. Um, I mean, some of those maybe myself, but I, for example, I didn't download the situation leadership slides, so I know that wasn't me. Um, I didn't download the connectivism slides. I might have downloaded that one, but I actually don't think I did. So in this week, actually, that's pretty helpful to see that people found my slides useful. Um, I usually don't get too many comments or likes, but that's fine. I mean, I really do it to share my professional work and to keep it there as well so that I can access it anytime and I don't have to look for it within all my other files, but yet I have less files there and, and it's always available. So here are other slides I have uploaded. Sometimes I'm surprised which slides reach most viewers. Um, sometimes it's some of the, the slides that I made quickly actually that you know there were small class projects and some of the things that I worked on the most don't get that many viewers. I do recommend that you spend some time adding the characteristics that you want so that people and uh, know what it is about. If you don't add detailed information people just won't know I mean what's the slide about. Um, so in this case we have the description I think it's pretty good and 30 tags here so this can increase visibility or discoverability by 30 percent and I have a CC by license so people can use it and all they have to do is just uh, attribute it to me so I allow downloading you can cancel that if you don't want them to be able to download and then in this case I have a YouTube video and you can place it wherever you want to I place it usually in the end of my slides so let's see that slide again and here we have you have YouTube video inside so if I were to go to the back to the ending of it and there it is that's the YouTube video that is from a conference where I presented this material so if I wanted to I could do that as well great um, 
oops, I did that again. So you don't have the pro analytics, you just have the basic analytics, but that's fine. So this case was uploaded as a PDF. I did that on purpose because um, the slides have some formatting that didn't translate well. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is that you can upload the audio as well. And if you upload audio to it, then you have to make the audio match or you have to edit the audio so that it matches the flow of the presentation. Um, let me see, I'll just simulate it for you because I can't think of audio that I have, like some uh, audio for one of these ones right now. But uh, let's say I wanted to add audio to this presentation. So then I will go to Info and Settings, Add Audio, Upload MP3 File, let's go to Music, and let's just add a song in this case. So you could use it for a song, but ideally you use it for just being able to add audio so that your presentation you know, has voiceover basically. But again, a song may be a good thing to do as well. And one of the things that it's going to do now is it decides where the slide ends and you can play the sound pretty much and move it and you can be like, okay, no, I want this slide to end here. Um, so depending on the sound, you can use this place to either divide the, the audio equally or divide it in a way so that some like the slides have the audio that you want them to have. And that's pretty much it. Once you're finished, you press publish. And this works differently because instead of just showing you the audio on you know the last slide, like it was the case with the video, in this case it'll just play the audio as the presentation's going. Thanks.